On Stardate 48315.6, the USS Voyager was transported beyond our control, 70,000 light years across the galaxy to the Delta Quadrant. There, without aid from Starfleet, we began our 70-year journey home. In our numerous encounters, we came into contact with many dangerous and violent species. Having a limited crew with no chance of reinforcements, we determined that we needed a specialized team to handle the more dangerous situations. Tuvok, Voyager's chief of security, assembled an elite force of security personnel named the Hazard Team. Ensign Monroe is second in command of this uniquely trained team. Equipped with Seven of Nine's experimental anti-Borg weapon, the Infinity Modulator, the Hazard Team has beamed to a Borg cube on a dangerous mission. However, the team was quickly overwhelmed and the iMod is now in the hands of the Borg. Separated from the rest, Monroe is attempting to rescue the team. Monroe to Tuvok. I've been cut off from the rest of the Hazard team. I don't know where they are. Mr. Monroe. We have isolated your team members' life signs. They appear to be trapped in the tertiary power modulation chamber. Rescue them at any cost. Acknowledged. Tertiary what? Ensign, I've uploaded your mission objectives and tactical information. Review it now before proceeding. Hi guys, and welcome back to my next walkthrough. This is going to be Star Trek Voyager Elite Force, a first-person shooter game developed by Activision and Raven Software. First thing I'm going to do is shoot up this Borg distribution node, and that means that the Borg in this area are going to be turned off permanently for the moment. And the upshot of doing this was... I wasn't hugely enthusiastic about this game when it first came out. Uh, fortunately it's an FPS so everything's made of explodium around it. Um, and it reveals secret passageways. But I never felt the Star Trek universe was going to be very good as a first person shooter. That's generally not what the series is about. You keep doing just what you're doing there buddy, just ignore me. And. I wasn't tremendously uh, enthusiastic about how it was going to be implemented, but overall it seems to have done fairly well, and it was obviously good for a Star Trek game, but it turned out to be quite good anyway, so I decided to keep uh, persevering with it, and decided that since it's held quite nicely among the fans, I might as well do a walkthrough for it or at least a let's play of it. I'm pretty terrible at first person shooter games. I've never been a massive fan of them, but so therefore anyone who is familiar with Counter-Strike or Half-Life or uh, Team Fortress or anything like that will find me completely terrible at the game, but hopefully we can uh, bypass that somewhat. Unfortunately, it seems like the Borg collective consciousness isn't working too well because all right, they uh, don't take into account that you are hostile elements until you perceive a threat but the fact that I've already shot up two of their distribution nodes and they've kind of forgotten about it leads me to believe that these are the Borg from Unimatrix Zero and basically Voyager in general who are just completely and utterly inept at anything that they try and do. Still moving on into the bowels of the ship this was just getting used to the work and here's the secondary file on my compression rifle cop for that. Monroe! My savior! Get the eye marks on the table! Thanks, Monroe! Yeah. Well, that little shoot em up has introduced us to Rick Beesman, who's one of our uh, minor characters and it's also introduced us to the iMod, the BS I can now kill the Borg weapon. So I'm gonna do a lot of that. Whoa! Thanks Monroe. I'll get Odell back to the ship. You must 
Yep, so as you can already see, this hazard team is completely and utterly inept, and my graphics card started having a little bit of a wobble here, so... You might say a little bit of a skip, but nothing too drastic. But, the iMod is a weapon supposedly designed by Seven of Nine, which... Uh, basically changes frequencies at a completely unpredictable rate, and therefore the Borg are incapable of adapting to it. Basically, it was pretty much the only way you could get the Borg into an FPS-style game without them being overpowered. Hey, a blue force field? I don't see a disc node here. Huh, must have a special power source. Uh, I'd come with you if I had an iMod, but uh, let's say I stay here and hold down the fort. To be honest, I don't really get the logic behind that decision from Beesman because wouldn't you want to be with the guy who has the ability to kill the Borg rather than sitting on your own? Hey Monroe, if you're not back in five minutes, I'm not going in after you. <laughs> hey, the force field step. What the? Hey, Monroe, get back up here! Some Borg just beamed in and they're. See, this is what happens when you don't come with the guy who has the eye mod. Oh well, I guess I just have to shoot up some Borg, I suppose. Elite Force was a game I really enjoyed, to be fair, but it did have the classic Activision problem with... Uh, I'm not going to call it an Activision problem, but the problem with the games that were produced or published by Activision was that it was mainly just a case of let's see how much stuff the Trek community will find cool that we can pump into a game without realizing how it was supposed to work. Uh, for example, in Star Trek Armada, they put the Omega Particle in there and the Borg, obviously. Armada 2, you had the Borg and then they had Species 8472. Uh, what you saw me firing there was the alternative fire on the iMod. It's basically a one-shot kill. Uh, but it does use up a lot more energy, so if you're actually accurate with the iMod, mod, you're probably better off using the standard fire. Although, here's something that you can do. More Explodium. Man, I suck. One of them actually lived through that because I got my timing wrong. And in this game, same stuff again. We've got the Borg in here, but the Borg aren't really the type of race that you deliberately go around shooting up. So, again, maybe not the best idea. You try and infiltrate the Borg cube by not being noticed, not by shooting up the place. Anyway, with that uh, kind of knocked on the head, I'm going to stay more positive because, as I said, I'm not an FPS. Oh, I got this. This is fine. This is fine. I said I had sure, I this. Hit. The Borg took the team through there. Beam out, Chang. You've done all you can here. Aye, sir. idiot. Well, as I said, I'm going to try and be a bit more positive because I did like this game. I like the way that some of the stuff's implemented and yeah, it's pretty much the only game I think that has Voyager in it or at least any sort of game that was built around Voyager's exploration in the Delta Quadrant. So for its one shot at gaming, I think that it's a pretty uh, pretty good effort really. Those of you who are more used to FPS's might recognise the engine, or at least if you're old enough to recognise the engine, you might recognise it. This is the Quake 3 engine, the ID3 engine, and to be honest, it handles pretty well from what I've uh, seen here. The game looks okay. Again, I missed the opportunity to use Explodium to kill the Borg, but uh, can't have everything. And this is the shooting fish in a barrel section. Whoa, he went flying. I do like the ragdoll effects as well, they're quite good. For a game released in the year 2000, this was uh, not a bad effort, and this is me losing my way. Quick, get the lift, get the lift. No, you're going the wrong way. Jump! Ugh. 
Yeah, if you want to see movement failure in FPS's, uh, just stick around. So, we're coming up towards the end of this level, I think, overall. With every member of the hazard team currently captured. Blow up the plasma filter again, just because I can. And generally the hazard team being completely useless at the moment, so one wonders why Tuvok put them together if they were going to be this incompetent. Not even told us what our mission on this Borg cube was, it was basically beam over there, suck up the place, all get captured, and then have your second in command try and rescue you all because you're all rubbish. Yeah, now this is just me being vindictive and shooting everything up. Hey, come on, how often do you get the chance to kill Borg in a one-on-one -on -one encounter? Hmm. Again, totally unnecessary, but... We're just about to enter the final area now, so... Let's see how we handle this situation. Hopefully with all the calm demeanour of a Starfleet officer. Yeah, right. Monroe! Thank God! Get us out of here! Monroe to Voyager. I've located the hazard team. They're trapped behind some sort of force field. Acknowledged, Ensign. See if you can locate the control console for the force field. Oh, you mean that? Well, that was pretty easy. Hey buddy, you don't look so good. Anyway, that is going to be the end of this mission. I'm going to press this console and go into a long intro sequence. I hope you enjoy staying with me. See you next time. Hey, 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 be careful. It's not working. We don't have time for this. No way, the dog! <laughs> I told you. Well, what was I supposed to do? Mr. Monroe, your tactical approach was, shall we say, tactless. All right, Hazard Team, report to debriefing. Nice going, Monroe. Sir, if I may. How was I supposed to know the panel would explode? That point is not relevant, Mr. Monroe. A given situation is not as predictable as you might desire. Your reckless decision has caused the death of you and your teammates. You have failed. Had you followed standard hazard team procedures, you may have survived the simulation and achieved your mission objectives. Yes, sir. Procedure. Speak freely, Henson. Deck four. With all due respect, sir, I don't think procedure would have mattered. There wasn't any way I could have possibly rescued them. Someday, Mr. Monroe, you may be called upon to do the impossible. Consider this to be your personal Kobayashi Maru. Red alert. All hands to battle stations. Computer. Reroute turbo lift to the bridge. Status. Captain, we have reports of secondary EPS conduits on decks 8 and 9 rupturing. Warp drive is offline. What happened? We responded to a distress signal from a derelict vessel and it opened fire. Tuvok, they don't respond to hails. Maybe we need to send a clearer message. Target their weapon systems and disable them. Firing phasers. Direct hit. Phasers had no discernible effect. Half shields are down, Captain. Rerouting auxiliary power to the shields. Captain, I'm getting reports of extensive damage on decks 9 and 10. We're not going to survive another hit. 
Photon torpedoes, full spread. Torpedoes away. Everyone all right? I am undamaged. What just happened? Captain, we seem to have been torn from normal space. I think we've been pulled through some sort of isodimensional rift. Where are we? Apparently, here, Captain. Sensors and most of Voyager's primary systems are offline. Until repairs are made, it may be difficult to ascertain exactly where here is.